on It's Supernatural. He was filled with hate and bitterness, a killing machine. Then God supernaturally filled him with love and compassion, even for his enemies. Do angels exist? Are healing miracles real? Is there life after death? Can people get supernatural help from another dimension? Has the future been written in advance? Sid Roth has spent 25 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid on this edition of It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. My guest was confronted by a huge angel and ever since then, miracles have been breaking out to such a proportion. I mean, like 90%, you heard me correctly, 90% of the people he prays for are healed. 50% instantly healed. Others gradually healed. I like those percentages. David, as I understand it, when you were, your mother was pregnant, uh, and uh, a voice came to her, and, and a wind, uh, and this voice, and she isn't even a believer uh, that knows God, uh, and, and this voice warned her about you, and two weeks later, what happened? Yeah, she, she heard a uh, wind blow in the room, and a voice told her to get out of the house. The second time it happened, she said, get away, leave me alone. Two weeks later, she was thrown out of a car uh, through the windshield. And, and she was uh, uh, pregnant how many months? Seven months pregnant. With you? Yes, and she broke seven ribs. And in her own way, she told the Lord, let this child be born healthy. I'll raise him to serve you. As a young child, I saw the ribs, like my knuckles, huge calcium deposits. And at seven years old, uh, we came into a relationship with the Lord. Now, now was that a painful condition for your Very mom? painful, very painful. Uh, like someone that perhaps would have the arthritis in the hands would be painful. Yes, like, they were not yeah. able to set the ribs and had huge calcium mm -hmm. deposits on it. Uh, so I guess she was worried that you were going to die in that auto crash, yes. and that's why she bargained with God, if you right. will. Right. So, what, and then you uh, had another close call with death, a car on a railroad track, right. and you were stuck. How does that happen? Right. Uh, we were in a vehicle, and we were crossing one of the tracks with a large hump, and the car just died, and there's a train from my right at high rate of speed. Just before he hit us, unseen hands pushed it off. And then also my mother on her ribs, we went to a healing revival, a tent revival in a nearby city. And people were jumping out of wheelchairs, the blind were seeing, we were in the back seat. She jumped up and screamed, no man even touched her. And all seven ribs were set. And she's 85 years old, uh, still with us today. Now, what about those big calcium deposits? Yeah, totally gone, everything, totally 100% healed. Did they x-ray <clears throat> her at all? I really don't know. Okay, but it was all the pain yeah, was set. gone. Well, they were totally set. They were all bulged out. They were totally set, totally perfect. Uh, with all of those experiences, you would think you would be putting God first, but you, you get married and you go into the uh, army, and uh, you're, you're immediately out to Vietnam, uh, and uh, your whole life was transformed. You became, for lack of better words, a killing machine. Yes. My wife and I have been married since we were 18, between basic and infantry training. I went to Vietnam. I've been 19 for six weeks when I went into combat. I was far from God, but he kept his hand on me. Uh, one time, Sid, I broke, I tripped a booby trap hand grenade two feet from my right leg and never exploded. Another time, a mortar round landed in front of me, bounced around, and I explode. Another time, my helmet was tore totally off my head with a large piece of scrapnel from my own jet planes. It cut me for a flip, not a scratch on me. And then another time I walked into an enemy base camp, I went to one side by myself. I walked up on a kitchen bunker. There was seven chickens walking in front and they carried their food in the jungle with them. I kept walking up 15 feet away. It turned out there were seven men in the bunker. Five of the seven stood up. The one at the door actually smiled at me. I think it was a horror on my face. I dove behind a termite hill, began to fire, 
a weapon jam, began to throw grenades. Finally, two other men got close enough to throw grenades to me. That was on the other side, and God let me live. But it sounds to me, how close were they to you? 15 feet. Well, with all those men with weapons, how did you survive? I dove behind a turn my heel. I know it was God because they were firing automatic weapons. My heel was gradually leaving me, <laughs> dirt flying everywhere. It's just God let me live. But what was going on as, you, as a person? I mean, I understand a lot of people that are in that type of an environment, they, they get in a, a, a rush, a high from yes. this, uh, and, and they almost have to do this yes. uh, to keep that high. And, and a lot become alcoholics. Yeah. How about you? Yeah, uh, the adrenaline in the jungle and stuff would keep you going and a lot of hate and bitterness. And then when we go back in base camp, I was drinking and drinking and drinking. And uh, I, I became totally bound by alcohol. And at 30 years old, God set me free in one moment. He would say, what, how many, what step program you go through? One step to Jesus. And I was free, hmm. totally let, free. And, and, and let me take you back just a little bit, though. Uh, when you came back to the United States from Vietnam, I mean, here, one moment you're uh, this killing machine, mm -hmm. and the next moment you're a civilian. How did you handle that? It, it was very, very hard. Uh, I really desired to go back and fight again, but I uh, would not put my wife through that again. And so it was very, very hard. I was still bound by alcohol. Uh, later, I calmed down and, a little bit, went in law enforcement where I was legally fighting. But, and you probably went to it because you needed that the adrenaline yes, rush. Yes, certainly. I was able to legally fight, and, and uh, I loved the excitement mm -hmm. and stuff. But there was a, a moment when you would... Uh, uh, go to a church w with uh, uh, some beer, and the reason you had the beer is in case you didn't go all the way with God, at least you'd have the beer? Yes. It, it was that, I mean, was that really your logic? That's yes, pretty I, I messed was, up logic. I was up hunting, and I'd take my Jeep to the church, with beer ice down the back of the Jeep, and right on the church lot, and I said, if I don't get right with God tonight, I'll drink on the way home, and I would do that. And then but, but you know what happened? One night, he, he, he hunts deer, and while he was hunting deer, something amazing happened to him. Don't go away. We'll be right back after this word. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. The next best thing to attending a healing service with David Cordeaux is attending one of his services in the privacy of your own home. Call now to get your own copy of David Cordeaux's audio CD message, Healing Today. For a donation of $15, shipping is included. Ask for offer number 1103. Through this audio CD, you will receive the faith to believe God for the impossible as you listen to David share his supernatural testimony. Do you know someone who is dying? Do you know someone with a disease that wants to be healed? Do you desire to receive the same healing anointing that David Cordeaux operates under? When David preached this message, 90% of those sick were healed. A nine-year-old boy was instantly healed of deafness. People with arthritis were instantly healed. Others reported dramatic healings taking place days later. Call now to get your own copy of David Cordeaux's audio CD message, Healing Today. For a donation of $15, shipping is included. This audio CD is also for those of you who desire a transfer of the healing anointing on David, so you too can pray for the sick and see them healed. Ask for offer number 1103. Or you can write to Sid Roth, It's Supernatural, Post Office Box 1918, Brunswick, Georgia 31521. Please specify offer number 1103 or log on to SidRoth.org. This CD will help you, your loved ones, and friends to walk in the supernatural. Call or write today. We now return to It's Supernatural. So what happens? David Cordo, uh, he, he's in Vietnam. He's trained to be a human killing machine. He saw the reality of God as a child. He saw his mother healed. But I, I, I guess, well, how could you get so far away, David? Well, really, I was never really grounded. Uh, all I knew was growing up was in and out of church. And so I did not was really grounded in the Word. Oh, okay, so one night you are uh, hunting deer and you repent. What causes someone to repent of sin? God was dealing with my heart very, very strong, and I was on a deer stand, 
and I'd been dropped off by my father. I laid my gun to the side and began to weep and asked the Lord, what's wrong with this, what I was doing? And it just thundered my soul, it's come between you and your God. I said, I'll never touch it again. And instantly he set me free. We, I went to my wife, we got children, went 50 miles back to where I lived in Beaumont, Texas at that time, drove 50 miles back, I took all the junk out of my house, all the booze, threw it in a pizza place dumpster, headed back to, to, to the church, hit the altar that night. And the same night when I got to the altar, the evangelist said, thank the Lord for this man. <clears throat> a moment later, he said, thank the Lord for this woman. I didn't have to look up as my wife. We came to God together. Now, the thing that is so amazing to me is someone that's gone through experiences like that <clears throat> where uh, his enemy was trying to kill him. And short of the hand of God, he would have died. Uh, you go back to Vietnam. You go back to those areas. And what do you feel when you see these people that were trying to kill you? My first four trips was very, very hard. I would see someone maimed. I'd see someone in the lake missing. I'd begin to grieve, wonder, did I fire that shot? Did I throw the grenade? But yet God had put such a, <clears throat> a love for the, the Vietnamese people in my life that I used to hate everyone we fought against and everyone we fought for which is common for Vietnam veterans today even. And they put a love for, for the Vietnamese, a, a tremendous love. And I love everybody now, totally changed. Only God can do that. So there, there's hope for you. Uh, you that have been in any war, or you that have been in the war called life, there's hope for a change. But the miracles that David has seen, the miracles really started, David, uh, when a man spoke on behalf of God a pr prophecy to you. Tell yes. me about that. Yes, a prophet had came uh, to where we were meeting at and he told me the next trip into Vietnam, which I was just getting ready to go back in, that my whole ministry would change. I was at the airport in Hong Kong. My son was there, he went over to another side and a huge angel came up behind me. It felt to me, I did not see him, but it felt like about 20 foot wide like a furnace behind me. And I knew that it had to do with an angel commissioning me into a new area of ministry. On that trip, I began to see tumors disappear in my hands. And since then, we've seen help, numerous. Help me out. I, I hear your words. <laughs> when you say tumors, di tell me about one. Yeah, tell okay. me about a specific person. Okay, the, the, there's many, many of them. Uh, the first one was a lady I just laid my hand on. I actually felt like it's wiggling in my hand the spirit in that thing, and it just went totally down. You, oh. you, you believe sometimes uh, cancer is a spirit, or yes, every time? Yes, spirit of death. Spirit yeah. of death. Spirit of death. And One, you could fear, feel when you put your hand on the tumor, the tumor was wiggling yeah, I, the I spirit felt, it, it felt like a mouse was in my hand. Huh. It was weird, and it went down. I don't feel that every time, but I did the first time there, and I have since. But then we had, in, I work in Cambodia also, in the Philippines. But in Cambodia, they brought a six-year-old Vietnamese boy to me. And uh, he had a, a cancer on his left buttocks the size of a cantaloupe, hmm. several plum-sized cancers down his leg. Could not even stand up. They carry him. He's leaning against a chair. We command the spirit of death to come out, command to be healed. Through the translators, they felt a little stronger, but they carry him out. Three days later, he jumped, off, jumped up and took off running. When I went back nearly a year later, they told me, I said, bring him to me. And, and I have a picture of me standing with this boy a year later, and he's now a teenager in Phnom Penh, Cambodia, he's a Vietnamese boy. Uh, you, you know what I find interesting? You were a pastor for a while, and for over 20 years, no one in your church died from a, a disease. Right. <clears throat> we, <clears throat> I pastored for 22 years before turned over to my son, and we never had a single person die of a disease. We had several get cancer, but they all got healed. But what you know, another thing that intrigues me about David is this arthritis business. So many people have arthritis; it's become the all Americans cop out, <clears throat> so to speak. Oh, you have a pain in your uh, hand, arthritis. You have a pain in your knee, arthritis. Tell me about someone with a pain in their knee with arthritis. Oh, okay, we had a man in the Philippines that came up um, to be prayed for. His right knee was totally crippled with arthritis. I prayed, and God healed his knee. And then he went back and uh, later they brought him up to testify. 
He began to testify about his knee being healed. But what I did not know, he said, my right eye was totally blind and it popped open. Hallelujah. Uh, so, David, you must have an unbelievable faith for people to be healed. Yes, we see over 90% healed. Over 50% is instant miracle, as I call it. And then the other part is usually within two weeks. Sometimes we'll pray for a huge cancer. It'll disappear in my hand. Other time we pray, it looks like nothing happened. But you look before two weeks is up, it's totally gone. So if you pray for the people that are watching us right now, uh, or perhaps when we come back from the break, uh, what do you think is going to happen? I, I believe they will be healed. I don't, I don't even, I used the word, word wrong. I said think. <laughs> I don't think. I know. Yes. I absolutely know. <laughs> I tell you, I know <laughs> that if you agree in the name of Yeshua, it is finished. Don't go away. We'll be right back after this word. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. For he himself is our peace. Who has made both Jew and Gentile into one. His purpose was to create in himself. To create in himself. His purpose was to create one new man. Sid Roth has found the key to worldwide revival. This is God's time to reach the Jewish people with his love. Messiah Jesus has torn down the wall dividing Jew and Gentile. The two together form one new man to reach the world. God's method to reach the Jewish people is through signs and wonders. This is why our website, SidRoth.org, is jam-packed with tools to equip you to move in signs and wonders. Understand Israel and the Jewish roots of the church. Log on to SidRoth.org today. We now return to It's Supernatural. The presence of God. <laughs> uh, there is nothing, nothing in this world to compare to experiencing the presence of God. And, and David Cordeau and myself, we're, we're in the glory, the presence of God. And all things are possible. Now, David, you, 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 you almost so nonchalantly <laughs> say uh, it's almost automatic for people that have arthritis to be healed. Yes. How about hearing? What goes on yes. there? We see many, many deaf healed. Uh, that, um, that, like uh, going to Cambodia, Vietnam, we'll have many deaf healed also in the U.S. Blind see in the U.S. But uh, a while back I was in Cambodia and, and we're just deaf ears one after the other are popping open and many many times that we'll even have 10 or 12 children lined up we we'll say in Jesus name and go through pop 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 everyone is 100% I try not to let them leave unless they're 100% healed and I have my translators check them how, how are they doing check them they're not 100% send them back over here and he opens because the deaf will hear David had a dream and in this dream, he saw what's about ready to happen on planet Earth, yes. and it's actually starting now. David, <clears throat> tell us this dream. Yes, God gave me a dream, and in the dream, I walked in this uh, huge auditorium that uh, one of the uh, major healing evangelists of our day had been ministering. But as I walked into the dream, there was people sitting in wheelchairs that had not been healed in the meeting. And what God was telling me is that some people had come on stronger than we've ever seen. And I'd walk up to people and I'd reach out and I'd be maybe 10 feet away in this white light about eight inches around, the purest, whitest light I've ever seen in my life, fired out my arm and hit them. They didn't climb out of the wheelchair. It was almost like something threw them out. And then others, I'd walk up and there was a white light came out of my innermost being, the same light, and hit them and blew them out. And what God was telling me is what is coming on the earth. Is, is there is anointing coming on that's going to dwarf any healing ministry we've ever known. Thank God for all of them. They're great. But what's coming, said is going to dwarf anything we've ever known. And is it going to be just you? No, no. It's, it, I believe it's coming on his body. I believe that nobody's from nowhere is going to walk onto the stage of life, and they're going to have such power and authority for this end time. 
Let me tell you something. Jesus. I have been to these big meetings <clears throat> where there have been many miracles, but I've gone in the back where the cameras don't go. And I've seen the sections with the wheelchairs. Mm -hmm. And I've seen the people pushed in with their faith up to here. And one or two people getting healed. And I'm so appreciative of those one or two people getting healed. But I tell you, if our Messiah was there, they'd all be healed. And they go back so crushed. David, there's got to be a better solution yes. for those people. Uh, what happened right after you had that dream. Okay, right after that dream that God gave to me, I was in Cambodia. Two days later, they carry a lame man up into my meeting, and he stands up and walks. And then later in the trip that I was on, uh, we went to a, a house under the little hut, and an elderly man had been run over by seven water buffalo, all broken, hmm. crippled, just laying there, couldn't even lift his head. And when I walked up there, something just came, I mean, it felt like something fell on me. And I told my translator, I said, this man's going to walk. And they had those huge beds uh, with the slats under there. I crawled under, slid him by the ankles to the end, lifted him and said, in the name of Jesus, I command you be healed. Again, that man did not climb up off that bed. It's like something threw him in the air. He landed dancing and shouting. And all his neighbors, their eyes were like saucers because they'd seen a real miracle of God. And what you saw, though, this is going to be, in other words, the, the light of God's presence is going to come right out of many people like you yes. and just go into the person and they're going to be healed. Are you ready? I mean, if I was to throw a ball at you right now, would, you, would the ball hit you in the nose or would you catch it? I want you to catch it now because I agree in that only name that is above your disease and your pain, <clears throat> in the name in Hebrew, Yeshua, Jesus, that you are going to catch your healing. You know how to catch cold, don't you? Takes no talent. Mm -hmm. I want you to catch your healing right now, David, pray. Yes, I want to pray right now in the name of Jesus. I command every sickness, every disease, every spirit of infirmity, every foul spirit of death, every spirit of cancer, every spirit of arthritis, every deaf ear, every blinded eye, I command to open right now in the name of Jesus. I command it in Jesus' name. Yes. Hallelujah. Oh, let me tell you, the presence of God has been so awesome. And if God's presence is here, guess what? God is here. Yes. And if God is here, of course you're healed. And I, I've just heard that people with pain of all kinds are being healed right yes. now, especially back. Yes. If you'll just bend over, you'll see that your back, your spine is totally straightened out. Your pain is gone from your neck. Uh, David, what do you see happening within the next year? Do you see this intensifying? Yes, I do, uh, Sid. In fact, uh, going back to that light, just a moment. I've had now for just a few years, it happened again just recently in a meeting, that praying for people, and suddenly they say that they're seen as blind in light. Not everyone I pray for, but some of them keep doing it. And this is all over the world, people have told me this. They see this blind in light. And, and I believe it's just a forerunner of what's coming. That what I saw would dwarf anything we know, and we're going to move into that. I see a greater anointing coming upon his people, much greater. You told me that recently you were speaking in a congregation and people reported about heat. Explain that to me. Oh, yes. Uh, many times uh, in our ministry, uh, heat, a lot of times when I pray, heat will come out of me. I don't have to have it. Just what he did is good enough, but it happens. But then sometimes there's like angels of fire come in. I was just recently ministering. And, and the, the heat of God came in that everyone in the meeting was, was hot. One young lady was from the Philippines was at our meeting <clears throat> here in the U.S. Two hours later, she finally puts ice on her forehead. She was burning from the heat of God. They're just coming in and burning out everything that's not of Him. I don't know about you, but I'm feeling some of that heat right now. What does God want to do right now, David, right at this moment? He, he, he wants to, to begin to heal, set people free. That it's not going to be a long struggle that instantly now people will be set free. That a lot of people think, well, maybe someday it'll happen. No, today. The, 
Why, why is it speed? <clears throat> what you're telling me is it's speeding up. Yes. What used to take six months is going to take six seconds. Yes, very quickly. Because he, Jesus is why? the same is he, yesterday, Is he today. coming back soon? Yeah, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Everything ever was, he is right now. And his people are coming in that revelation that he is here to do it right now. And very powerful. And I believe that the coming is very, very near. And we, we need to see this to reach our world that they need to see a demonstration, a manifestation of the things of God. Listen, the world doesn't want religion. It's had religion up to here. Yes. What the world wants is love. What the world wants is acceptance. What the world wants is peace. What the world wants is healing. What the world wants is destiny. What the world wants is purpose. Forget the world, that's what you want. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you, it starts with yes. you. God's already made his move through this program. God has already yes. reached his arms around you. Yes. You have a destiny on your life. I don't care what your circumstances are, you and God are a team. But first, your sins are separating you from your Creator. Do exactly what David did. Repent, tell God you're sorry for your sins, and believe the blood of Yeshua the blood of Jesus has washed your sins away. And when you are clean, and it just takes as quickly as you say that prayer, make Yeshua your Lord. Ask him to live inside of you. Read the Bible. Get to know him. It's called the truth book. That's my favorite book, the Bible, the truth book. It's truth. The next best thing to attending a healing service with David Cordeaux is attending one of his services in the privacy of your own home. Call now to get your own copy of David Cordeaux's audio CD message, Healing Today. For a donation of $15, shipping is included. Ask for offer number 1103. Through this audio CD, you will receive the faith to believe God for the impossible as you listen to David share his supernatural testimony. Do you know someone who is dying? Do you know someone with a disease that wants to be healed? Do you desire to receive the same healing anointing that David Cordeaux operates under? When David preached this message, 90% of those sick were healed. A nine-year-old boy was instantly healed of deafness. People with arthritis were instantly healed. Others reported dramatic healings taking place days later. Call now to get your own copy of David Cordeaux's audio CD message, Healing Today. For a donation of $15, shipping is included. This audio CD is also for those of you who desire a transfer of the healing anointing on David, so you too can pray for the sick and see them healed. Ask for offer number 1103. Or you can write to Sid Roth, It's Supernatural, Post Office Box 1918, Brunswick, Georgia 31521. Please specify offer number 1103 or log on to SidRoth.org. This CD will help you, your loved ones, and friends to walk in the supernatural. Call or write today. If you're encouraged and helped by these television programs, please consider assisting us with future productions. Send your tax-deductible gift to Sid Roth, Post Office Box 1918, Brunswick, Georgia, 31521. Call toll-free at 1-800-548-1918 or visit our website at sidroth.org.